Hey, what's happening, guys? All right, ask yourself a question. What is the most widely produced integrated circuit of all time? If you're into electronics at all, you know it's this little 8-pin guy right here, the 555 timer. Just so useful. I mean, it, it is incredibly useful. It can be set up in different modes. Let's... uh. Let's zoom out. You don't have to mark these buttons so I know which one is out and which one is in. Yeah, here's the circuit diagram for setting up the 555 timer in a stable mode. And it is good, and it is proper, and it is so convoluted it'll make your head hurt. Now, you've heard me say, if you've been watching my videos, KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. This is good. This is academic. This is too much. My favorite engineer of all time is Woz. Steve Wozniak, the inventor of the Apple computer. The brains behind the thing. Woz always tries to design his circuits using the least number of of components. I believe we can knock off a whole bunch of components here. What I'm going to show you now is the easiest way to set up a 555 in a stable mode, basically a square wave generator. I know it's simple, I know it's academic, but this is the simplest way to do it and you're going to be shocked at how simple it is. So first, let's draw our chip so we know what we're talking about so we have a point of reference one two three four five six seven eight these are these are our pins eight is vcc one is ground two is our trigger three is our output four is reset 5 is control voltage, 6 is threshold, and 7, I always forget to how 7 is, 7 is, seven is called discharge, okay? So, we need to set up our, 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 our 555 in A stable mode so it flip flops back and forth between high and low. How are we going to get the frequency to determine what we want? Well, that's pretty simple too. The formula for frequency is 1.44 over R1 plus R2 times C. That's it. That's the formula. Now, let's set this up with the least number of components possible, the KISS method. I have all of the components we're going to need to put this together right here. That's it. This is all we need. This goes with my other acronym. Well, it's not really an acronym. It's the seven P's. Proper previous planning prevents piss poor performance. Have everything you need before you start your project, if at all possible. Sometimes you can't. I realize that. All right, so let me get this thing which does not want to cooperate with me to cooperate with me. And then let's zoom in and focus in and let's start. Number one, we're going to take pin eight to VCC. That's pin seven, Paul, with your big fingers. Okay, pin eight to VCC. Boom. Oh, better zoom out a couple clicks so we can see the whole thing, huh? Okay. Pin one goes to ground. cheap Chinese breadboards. Okay, so there's our power. Now for the magic. Pin six, threshold, goes to pin two, the trigger, like that. Pin four, our reset needs to be high. 
So we connect pin 4 to pin 8. Like that. Now we need our timing capacitor. That goes between the trigger and ground. So we connect it between pins 1 and 2. And finally, we need our timing resistors. And for this, we are going to use a little pot here. What's that? 20K. And it goes between pins 6, 7, and 8 with the wiper on pin 7. Just like that. That's it. That is a 555 timer in a stable mode. Now, how much easier is that than that mess? So, let's add a couple of, of pins here. And these are both going to go on pin three. These are, this is just so I have something to clip the, um, oh my words the oscilloscope leads to then we're going to bring in some power five volts ground to the ground rail positive to vcc let's bring in the oscilloscope probe we'll take our ground lead and clip it to this little piece here put in the ground and we'll take our signal lead and we will put it right there on pin 3 and now we shall rotate up let me zoom out so we can see the whole scope there and there you have it we have our nice square wave our frequency is a little over one kilohertz. Our duty cycle is 52%. We can adjust that by adjusting that potentiometer we put there. Let's see, 52.6. There. Oh, so close. Come on. Close enough. I'm not going to mess with it anymore. We're putting in five volts. We are getting out 4.88 volts. Our pulse width is 500 and let's call it 10 microseconds. I mean, it doesn't get any easier than that. Boom, right there. If you wanna change the timing, change this capacitor. We're at one kilohertz right now. I will pull out this capacitor, boink, which I believe uh, clocked in at 64 nano. Let's see what, what, I'm just looking to see what I have laying around here. Uh, that's like an 82 puff. That might be a little bit small. Ah, here we go, some 104s. Who knows what 104 is? One zero four zeros. Anyone? Yes, you in the back. Hundred nano, correct. So we shall put that in. Connect our probe lead back up. And we'll swing back up to the old osmeloscope. And you can see our frequency has now dropped to 710 hertz. Now watch, I'm going to pull this out. Boink. And now what you're seeing is the capacitance of the breadboard. Remember the hidden capacitor video we did? But don't worry about that. I'm going to put in one of these little small capacitors here. This is a 82, I think. And let us adjust here. 
and we now have a frequency of uh, what 339 kilohertz that's it keep it simple stupid the simplest 555 timer circuit I hope you guys enjoyed it if you did you know what to do give me a thumbs up if you didn't give me a thumbs down but that's it I'm out peace